Good morning. My name is Erica, and I'd like to thank you uh, for joining us today for our PeopleSoft HCM 9-2 webinar. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. At that time, uh, we'll be muting all participants, but you'll notice on the right-hand navigation there's a chat feature. If you have any questions or concerns during the webinar, I'm here and happy to help. So please just type your chat or question into the box, um, and I will, I will help you out. We'll be addressing any questions for the presenters at the end of the webinar, if time permits. Um, and if for whatever reason we're unable to get to your question this morning, we'll be sure to follow up with you um, so we can get you whatever question, um, the answer to your question. We are excited to have Janie Martin with us to share her knowledge on this topic today. Janie is the director of our PeopleSoft Human Capital Management Group here at MTech. And with that, I'll turn it over to Janie. Hi everyone, good morning, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, as Erica mentioned, um, my name is Janie Martin, and I'm the practice director for our PeopleSoft Human Capital Management Group. Um, so happy to um, have you all here with us today. Uh, if you can't hear anything, um, please uh, let Erica know, and um, she'll make sure that we can um, adjust accordingly. So today's agenda, I will start with a quick introduction um, to MTech and our HCM PeopleSoft practice. Uh, we'll then look at Oracle's ongoing investment in PeopleSoft. Uh, then we will get into some of the key 92 enhancements that are really um, non-application specific. So they cross the financials and HCM. Uh, and then we'll dig in more into the details of the HCM 92 module enhancements. As we to start today, uh, I wanted to give a quick introduction to MPEC. We are a global company, and we have locations in uh, 14, um, 14 locations worldwide. And we have been uh, working with clients for over 46 years. Uh, so we've been in the business for quite some time. Uh, we have over 1,000 employees, and uh, from an Oracle perspective, we are a platinum partner. Uh, we're also an invested partner community member um, on the HCM side, which is a um, big honor as it's, we're only one uh, out of ten um, nationwide that are part of that community. Uh, so we do a variety of services um, at MTech. From an Oracle perspective, we have the PeopleSoft suite as well as Fusion, Oracle eBusiness, uh, Hyperion, and OBIE. Uh, there's a lot of content on this slide. I won't go through all of it, um, but uh, we do have a variety of practice areas um, that we offer at MTech, everything from consulting services, the package application services, which is really where um, the PeopleSoft uh, world fits in, uh, cloud technologies, so Salesforce, um, as well as um, application development management and the infrastructure services. Uh, within the Oracle practice, uh, we have a variety of service offerings. Um, human capital management, which we'll be speaking to today, specifically on the PeopleSoft side. Uh, we also offer Fusion. Uh, we have enterprise technology, financial management, uh, EPM, as well as uh, OBI. From our PeopleSoft practice uh, for human capital management, uh, all of our Oracle um, Consultants are certified. Uh, we have an average of 10 years of experience uh, with many people who have, have more than that. Uh, we do uh, focus on both implementations and upgrades, so working on a variety of projects. And our employees and practice team members really have a breadth of depth um, of their competencies. So we look for people who understand not just one module, but really have an understanding of the system. Uh, we also have a good focus on best practices and have a lot of industry experience based on all of our work, both at MTech and in prior lives, um, as well as a lot of 9-1 experience. Now, today our, our webinar is on 9-2, and um, as 9-2 has just recently come out, we are getting up to speed quickly and ready to um, get started on the 9-2 project. Uh, so with that, Oracle's investment in PeopleSoft. So uh, there have been a lot of questions around this. Uh, 
in the past. And the main point of these slides is really to just echo that Oracle is um, is going to be investing and continuing to invest in, in PeopleSoft. So they are dedicated to continuing the software and the application um, right now. Um, this slide refers more to 9-1, but I think the key piece that's interesting about it is the um, percentage of customers who are on release 9-1. So 65% adoption rate is very high for and release. Um, of course, there is the remaining 35%, and that is probably where a lot of you come in. Um, maybe some of you are already on 9.1, um, or you're looking to move from an earlier release onto 9.2. With 9.2, um, there are over a thousand enhancements that have been delivered, and this is across uh, the Oracle suite. So we'll look at a lot of those today. Uh, we'll look at some of the themes with respect to 9.2. One of them is really lowering the total cost of ownership. So um, Oracle has provided a, a variety of ways to do that. Things, tools like the test framework, update manager, um, and cloud services, which enable you, you as an organization to reduce your ownership and cost of ownership. Also, um, one of the things that we'll look at is usability, and that's a great way um, as well to, um, from an ongoing basis, to reduce um, your cost in system maintenance. From a PeopleSoft roadmap perspective, as you can see, uh, there's a lot on this chart. Um, we are way over on the left side right now with the release of 9.2 in March, at the end of March. Um, you can see that, um, as I mentioned before, Oracle is committed to um, maintaining the PeopleSoft system. So this is at a high level, a roadmap of major releases as well as tools and feature pack releases. Uh, you do have many options when it comes to the roadmap for HCM. Uh, so, of course, today we're talking about the upgrade, number one there, um, upgrade to 9.2 uh, with the new release. Um, there are other options as well. So I mentioned feature packs on the previous slide. Those really enable uh, organizations to take advantage of new functionality off-cycle, so without waiting for a major release. Uh, additionally, there's the ability to integrate um, talent management uh, from older versions up to the new releases. So from a 9.1 perspective, talent management 9.1, you can um, integrate back to 8.9 and 9.0. Uh, you can also integrate 9.1 and 9.2 talent management uh, without an upgrade. So that's a good, um, good way for some clients who aren't ready to upgrade yet um, to take advantage of some of the new features and functionality available. Um, with the focus on talent management that has existed and a lot of the improvements that have occurred throughout the last uh, two releases now. And lastly, there is also an opportunity um, to start implementing the fusion model. Um, so there is what we call a coexistence model. Um, if a customer wants to stay on PeopleSoft with their core data, but start leveraging some of the additional functionality and offerings um, from a fusion perspective. So one area that we've um, seen a lot of interest with respect to the coexistence model is compensation management. So staying, keeping on PeopleSoft um, from, from core data and then using the fusion comp management solution. Uh, with respect to 9.2, um, there is a direct upgrade path from 9.0 and 9.1. Uh, 8.9 is the, the two-step jump, um, so those of you on 8.9, uh, it can be done. It just uh, is not the straightforward um, upgrade. Uh, and then from financials, there is a direct upgrade path from versions 8.9 and above. Uh, with 9.2, uh, there has been a focus on really the end user experience. So. Uh, making the system more intuitive for users to use, reducing the amount of clicks it takes um, to do things through the actionable items, and really allowing your users to be more effective and um, enabling your workforce to take advantage of the system and easily transact in it. Um, so here are the themes. Um, so we have the um, 
really the simplicity of the system, uh, the completeness, and um, then, of course, the cost effectiveness and saving. So from the simplicity perspective, there are new concepts that enable um, or simplify and streamline business processes, things like activity guides, train stops, related actions, and embedded help. And we'll look at each of those here in a little while. Um, it really allows the user to more um, intuitively proceed through the application and complete their business processes. Uh, additionally, with productivity, uh, we have things like work centers, which tr um, combine transactions and analytics all into a single place. So a user can go in and have access to all the data they need related to that work center. So from an HCM perspective, um, the two big work centers that were delivered were uh, e-performance and time and labor from a 9-2 per perspective. And then, um, of course, the lower cost of ownership. So uh, eliminating customizations, allowing more configurable options as part of the system. And we'll see that as we go through um, the module-specific um, depth as well. There are a lot more templates and a lot of um, additional configuration that you can use to eliminate some of those customizations and really make the system meet your needs. Uh, so with that, we will start looking at the 9.2 enhancements. So again, these are the general um, and not application-specific enhancements. Um, we will look from a focus of the HCM application today, um, but these are delivered across you know, both HCM as well as their financial applications. Um, ELM, et cetera. Uh, the first item is the secure enterprise search. Uh, so this replaces the prior Verity search um, that was used. And what it does is it really allows for both an application and a component search from your general search feature. Uh, you can see in the screen print that I have included here, uh, there is a search for uh, the name Susan. And you can come back and see data. Um, so you can see her profile data. You can see career plan, job data, directly from those search results. You also have the ability to filter by category and limit your results in that way. Um, additionally, we have related actions over here on the right. So directly from these search results, so you have the ability to navigate through a menu component to the action that you'd like to take. Uh, the next item are pivot grids. So these really are advanced reporting um, or embedded analytics that are offered within your PeopleSoft application. And this is great because it's really a way to leverage the data that you already have in your application without having to um, go elsewhere or export data. Uh, the pivot grids really serve in a similar fashion to a pivot table in Excel, um, but again, all right there within the application. Uh, so these were originally released as part of um, Tools 8.52, uh, but then there were some additional um, grids that are also released um, with the 9.2 application. And the, the functionality continues to be enhanced. Uh, so with this, um, employees have the ability to go in and, and um, really look at the analytics. It provides a flexible solution, so you have the ability to drill down um, in data, see the additional levels. You have the ability to filter your data. Um, you can see in the screen print here from a job code, you can filter based on the job code. And you can view the data in different ways. So you can view detailed data, you can view um, bar, pie charts, um, different types of graphs as well. Uh, the tool uses query. Uh, to gather the data and display the results. And uh, in addition to the delivered pivot grids, you do have the ability to leverage a pivot grid wizard uh, to create new charts. So you can create data on, you can create a chart on any data in the system using the query tool, as well as this pivot grid wizard. Uh, with the data, we have different ways to view it. So you can view um, the grid data, which is more of the traditional way of viewing data um, in a list. You can view a chart only, or you can view both. 
and you have the flexibility to determine how the data appears. So what fields are you going to be on your row? Axes, what is going to be your column, and what fields are going to be used to filter data. And you can also um, enable a drag and drop where you switch the uh, row and the column, for example. Uh, so I'd like to walk through a quick demo of the pivot grid functionality in the system. Uh, just to give a feel for what it looks like. So here I'm going to go into the pivot grid wizard. Like I mentioned, you can do it directly from um, here are your delivered grids. You can also add a new value and create your own. Um, but for today, I'm going to look at the job opening um, opened and closed. And you can see there are steps that you complete to create um, your guide. Uh, so you have your query that you choose, your data source is a query, and then you have the columns that go with it. Um, from here, you have the ability to identify what columns um, are going to display and how they display. Um, you can also aggregate the data um, if you so desire. Okay, and then, um, like I mentioned, from your list of fields that you have available, you can choose if they want them to be a column, a row, or a filter. Um, so here is a sample um, of this pivot grid that we were looking at for job openings. Um, you can see right now it is a um, 2D um, bar graph. You do have the ability to uh, to change that. So you can say for chart options that you want it to be, um, let's say, a 3D bar chart, um, but you have all these different options available. So now we're in 3D. Um, here are your filters. So you can um, select all, or you can choose one based on your data and your view. You also have the ability to see a detailed view. Uh, and you can also drill down um, to a lower level. So we can drill down into a uh, job uh, code. And then from here, you can also change the type of chart that you are viewing. So this is a really good feature. And as we look at the module-specific updates, we'll see a lot of the different areas where um, these are used. OK, the next item is embedded help. Um, this, again, is another great item for usability. It allows the users to view help directly from the page where they're transacting on. Um, so in this example, we're on job data um, on the work location page. If you click on this little icon, information comes up. And it's generally a lot more detailed um, and specific to the actual page or the transaction that is being um, submitted. This also, these um, embedded help content, um, can be modified, so you can create your own embedded help that is really used um, to give specific instructions um, to your organization's business processes, if you desire. Um, the last thing is it does also appear in a modal window, uh, and that can be moved around the page. And uh, The modal windows are another enhancement that we'll see throughout the application, and it, it's really a great feature because it allows you to view additional data and get that additional information without leaving the page that you're navigating on or having to open a new window. Um, so uh, that is a great enhancement, and it makes the system a lot easier to use as well. The next item are the business process maps. Um, so these are going to be delivered through your online help um, application or online help access. Um, so your uh, people books, essentially. You can view uh, business process maps that are related to um, each business process within the module that you're looking at. So here we have, um, for development, um, a business process for tracking skills, competencies, and accomplishments. Um, with that, there are links directly to people books. 
um, embedded links that you can see from the business process map. Um, so that's really a great way of being able to link the data without having to go um, back and forth from multiple sources. You have that embedded link to really save some time um, searching. Um, and of course, there are still the delivered, um, the hosted documentation and the PDF versions um, that can be downloaded as well. Now the next item uh, is another usability feature, um, which are announcements and notifications. Uh, these are configurable as well, and you have the ability to decide if you want to send an announcement um, or a notification. So announcement shows up on a home page. Uh, the notifications are email notifications, and you can send to one or the other or both through the application. So it's configurable. You identify what roles in the organization have the ability to send announcements. And from there, you can configure an announcement which looks just like an email. Uh, so when you create it, you create it, um, you address it to a person. It can be an individual, it can be a group, um, and that group can be by group ID, by a location, a department. You really have a lot of flexibility there. Or you can send it to the entire system. Uh, you also have ways to configure it um, so you can have it expire. Um, after a certain amount of time, you can have a recurrence where it pops up every month um, or say at the end of every pay cycle to remind people to um, complete their time and expense entries. Um, so it really is flexible and you also can attach links um, as well as actual attachments to the announcement as well. Uh, the next item uh, is the work center. Um, so I mentioned work centers earlier. And these really um, are a way for users to go in and complete all of the work that is needed for a transaction based on their role. Um, so it can be, you know, there's a pre-built home page for it. Um, it has a menu on the left, and you can continue to navigate through. And you can have not just the transactional data, but you can also include uh, reporting, analytics, um, the embedded analytics, um, and all the pieces of information that are critical for that business process. Um, so here is an example or a graphic that describes, you know, without using um, the work center, kind of what a transaction looked like previously. So there's a lot of going from documentation to navigation, um, searching, and going back and forth. With the Work Center, it's all consolidated. And as you can see down the left menu, you have the ability to do multiple things. Uh, there are standard pagelets that are delivered with the Work Center. So you have um, the My Work pagelet, um, which uh, is specific to that user and gives the work items that they need to complete. Um, it can also have access to any critical daily tasks. Uh, you have your links, so any important personal um, links or commonly used places in the application. Uh, you can have access to queries or pivot grids there, as well as any reports or processes. Uh, some of the benefits of the Work Center is that you're really um, consolidating all of your information into one location. So you have the actionable information, you can transact from it, and you can see your data um, with less navigation. Um, also the interruptions, so uh, preventing interruptions, as um, I mentioned earlier, you can really transact all from that one area rather than jumping back and forth and maybe getting distracted um, as you're pulling up some other information. Um, and then it also provides a complete view um, of the entire process. Um, so it's really helpful, um, especially as we look at um, processes that may cross modules, um, where this way you can have all the information in, in a little bit. So I'm going to go back to our demo environment. And I want to show one of the work centers.
All right. Well, now we're having access issues. So um, I actually do have a screen print in here um, in a little while that we can look at when we get there. Um, and we can try again um, for the demo piece of it um, at the end of the presentation if we have time. Uh, okay, the next item are um, are the forms and approval builder. This is another configurable tool that is allows users and administrators in the system to create forms um, as well as specify approval processes that are required for forms. Um, so this can really be used to eliminate a lot of your paper processing and documentation, and it also can be used to facilitate email-based approvals. Uh, you do have the ability to audit forms that are created in PeopleSoft. Um, you can also electronically approve and create you know, acceptance signatures. Um, and they are immediately accessible uh, online. So it's a great way to also consolidate your data so that you have one single source um, and can, can view um, forms uh, as well as additional data all in a single location. Uh, the next item is the iOS certification. Uh, so with 9.2, you do have the ability to use um, tablet devices to support PeopleSoft. Um, so the Safari browser right now is certified. Um, so that can be from both an iPad or an iPhone. And you do have the ability to um, use dashboards as well as work centers and um, also access your PeopleSoft application um, content from your mobile device. So that's a cool feature, um, one that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to. Uh, and I think as additional feature packs come out, as well as new versions, uh, the mobile focus will continue to be increased uh, within the application. Um, with that, there are also uh, mobile approvals that are available in 9.2. So um, from your mobile device, you have the ability to go in, review, and approve deny or push back your transactions uh, directly from that device. I uh, also have the ability to view attachments and add comments um, from your mobile device. Uh, this last one on the manager dashboards, um, this is something that was also delivered with the feature packs um, from 9.1. Uh, and again, it continues to be enhanced with new pagelets and features. Um, so uh, I just wanted to highlight it because it really does allow the user transacting to be streamlined. From this dashboard, um, you have the ability to uh, determine what page looks a person wants to see. So you can have um, embedded analytics, which is the performance status on the right. You can also view direct reports. Um, from there, you have the ability to uh, actionable um, movement so you can transact based on the drop down from the actions. Uh, and you can also view statuses and alerts. Um, so this again continues to be something that really helps the users and allows them to see the data and, and see the pieces that really apply most to them. Uh, with that, we will um, begin to look at the uh, the module-specific enhancements within uh, the 9.2 HCM application. Uh, so we will begin today with recruiting. Uh, so the first piece of recruiting is Candidate Gateway that we'll look at today. Uh, one of the big pieces is the branding um, that is now available with Candidate Gateway. So you really have the ability to configure your career site to make it um, make your brand apply. Um, so before, it was kind of a standard, and any of that branding really had to be customized. Um, this is a lot more flexible. So here's an example um, in this screen print of kind of the, the delivered um, careers branding page. But you can see there's a welcome page, and you can add your own um, graphics and your own um, logos that really will make it uh, be consistent with your own web pages um, and whatnot. Uh, the next item is the guided application process. Um, so this provides a visual representation of the application steps 
um, that are needed for an applicant to um, complete their, their application. So this um, really is an activity guide where you continue through the steps. Um, you have the ability to save mid-process. Um, and when you log back in, when the applicant logs back in, they would be able to pick up from where they left off. So you c they can see what they have completed, what they need to complete, and go right back into, uh, like I said, where they left off. Uh, this helps tremendously. Um, you will have you know users that you get distracted, maybe get signed out, um, and have to leave. So this way they can come back and um, and complete those applications. Uh, there are additionally some um, other usability enhancements. So um, the search enhancement, again, the uh, secure enterprise search is going to be consistent throughout the application. So that does apply to recruiting as well. Uh, one of the other items is the apply button um, for each job opening. So here you can see at the bottom of the page um, a screen print of latest job openings from a career site and you can choose and apply directly um, to each opening from there. Uh, there's also an updated interface for online job offers, and you can upload documents um, associated with it directly to the offer, uh, as well as improved notifications um, that are consistent um, through the application. Uh, one of the other pieces with Candidate Gateway that has been improved are the account management enhancements. So um, being able to control um, how applicants log in and, and the username and passwords that they create. So um, one piece is the password security. So here you can see the options that are delivered to control passwords, um, whether or not you want to enable the control or not, and if you want the passwords to expire. Uh, additionally, with 9.2, the first and last name is required when an applicant is creating an account, uh, which helps as um, you're looking to um, search or locate an applicant in the system again, or determine if they have been there in the, um, in the past. Uh, it also helps with retrieving um, any lost credentials. Uh, so moving on to Talent Acquisition Manager. Uh, again, the, the overall look and feel of TAM has, um, I would say, it has changed, but I would say has improved um, vastly. So they have created a, um, a new recruiting dashboard. Um, you can see that through the screen print here on the page. And this is going to utilize PageLit, similar to the manager dashboard um, that we looked at uh, a few slides ago. Uh, in order to present the data um, to the recruitment staff and, and hiring managers in the way that makes the most sense to them. Uh, so they have the ability to personalize it. They can choose which page list they want to display or hide. Um, and they can also um, change how it appears on the page. Uh, so some of the delivered page lists you can see here. Um, you can see the quick links um, for recruiting. Uh, the job openings, um, you have the ability from the job openings to see analytics here um, in the center of the page. Um, you can also look at applicants, and with the applicants, you have the ability to decide um, what date range, so any applicants within, say, 30 days, or if you want to see all applicants, um, you can do that as well. And we also have the ability to link to an interview calendar, um, as well as um, the alert uh, that you have. Uh, next we have pivot grids. Um, so as I mentioned, there are many pivot grids that are delivered across um, the various modules within the application. Uh, for recruiting, uh, specific to TAM, uh, there are four pivot grids that have been delivered. Again, more can be created, but these are the ones that come out of the box. Uh, the first one is the job opening and close trend chart. This is the one that we actually looked at when we looked at the pivot grid in the system earlier. Uh, we also have the job opening aging analysis. 
um, that is here on the left. And we also have the in-process applicant, and then a time to fill chart. So really, these, these analytics are going to help your hiring managers as well as um, recruiting staff to really get a feel for um, how the process is going, where there may be um, gaps um, time to fill, where you have jobs that may be taking uh, a long time to fill or some that go very quickly, and really help support um, and plan um, for your business. Uh, next we have the uh, related content framework. Um, so with that, um, you can, from your Manage um, Job Openings pages, you can um, see any related content and see a graphical analysis of it. So, for example, um, an applications received versus applications rejected um, is one of the displays, as well as a recruiting phases chart, um, which shows the percentage of the openings um, for applicants in each phase. Um, so you have the ability to access these using the related content drop-down menu. Uh, and with that, um, you can um, split the window and, and display charts in frames so you can really compare them um, next to one another. Also, um, the Manage Applicant page has been redesigned. Um, so similar to the Manage Job op Opening page, um, we do have the one-click action, so the actionable um, transacting, which will allow the recruiter to quickly um, review the application, review a resume, and mark the applicant as being reviewed. Um, from there, you also have the ability to do things like schedule interviews, um, reject an applicant, and print an application. Uh, it also is going to contain your key summary information on the applicant. Uh, and then last, the Manage Application page um, really provides a unified view of the recruiting activity for an applicant um, for that job opening. Uh, in other usability enhancements, um, we have a variety of things. So we have um, a refined cloning process um, that's available for job openings, so really take some of the um, the tediousness out of uh, creating the job opening. Um, also, additional insight into um, questionnaires uh, that need to be completed. Uh, we have the ability to um, view summary results for screening, uh, which helps um, streamline that process, as well as review comments um, that are in the routing emails for approvals. Um, there has also been a redesign of the interview calendar, and um, you have the ability to mark uh, job offers as accept or reject um, very easily with a single click. And then, as we mentioned again before, the, um, the search um, has been replaced. So SES now replaces Verity across. All right, um, next we're going to move into human resources and um, compensation. So the first item with uh, HR, within HR, is the Smart Hire template. Um, so this is going to be very similar and, and possibly easily confused with Smart Hire, um, but Smart HR is a similar concept but really extends the functionality of Smart Hire or template-based hires. Uh, it leverages templates for any personal um, job or profile transaction in the system. So before, where um, the template-based hires were limited to really that new hire process, bringing employees into the system or contingent workers into the system, now you have the ability to create these templates. And you can have it for um, a single type of data, so just personal data, or you can have it consolidated into a combination of personal job and profile data. With that, there's also a new Manage Transactions component, similar to Manage Hires, um, where you can set that up. And with your templates, you have the ability to um, 
configure it to decide if you want the data to be routed to HR for approval or if you want it to be automatically updated in the database. Uh, next, we have the um, additional pivot grants. Um, for within HR, these are all related to headcount. Um, so we're really enhancing the headcount reporting. Um, that's a need that has been continuously expressed by clients um, to Oracle, and uh, we've heard it numerous times, is we really need better headcount re reporting. So with these pivot grants, um, there are four different types that are provided. And um, they can be accessed through um, the direct line reports pagelet, as well as the traditional menu navigation. So when you look at that manager um, dashboard, you can view it directly from there. Uh, the delivered grids, there is uh, one for headcount movement as an administrator. So looking at job actions um, that occurred throughout the specified reporting period. Uh, there's a current headcount that is going to look at a snapshot based on the effective date um, and the current date um, of the distribution of workers by the organizational relationship. So it splits out employees versus contingent workers uh, versus a person of interest. There's a headcount movement for a manager. So that is going to display the um, job actions specifically of that manager's report um, during the specified reporting period. And then current headcount for the manager, which is a snapshot of the distribution of workers um, by a job code. So the administrator one is by organizational relationship, whereas um, the manager view is by job code. Uh, additionally, there are a variety of changes uh, related to profile management. Uh, two are related to the new search functionality. So as a result of the new functionality, um, there is a new scoring algorithm that is used for search match results. So when you're comparing profiles, whether it be a job profile to a person profile, um, it's going to use a new algorithm. And there, there are a lot of details on how that is, but I didn't want to um, bore everyone with the minute details there. Um, also, the direct reporting relationships are now included in the index build um, within the um, SES search. So as a result, um, there you don't need to run the additional process that was previously used to maintain the profile indexes. Um, so it saves a step in the ongoing maintenance, and those reporting relationships are um, automatically updated. Uh, next. Within the profiles, you have the ability to add custom properties um, to the templates. So adding, you know, giving more flexibility and being able to add your own fields um, outside of what are delivered. Uh, we also have the ability to see related item icons um, in the search and compare process. So things like if, you, if you're looking at competencies and there are sub-competencies related to that. Um, there is a related I item icon that appears, and with that, you have the ability to um, drill down further in your um, results, uh, in your filters, essentially, as well as um, see that additional content. And lastly, um, there is um, the in integration um, between the profile management profile and Smart HR, which I um, talked about earlier. All right, moving into compensation. Uh, so first we'll talk about the compensation cycles, which are kind of part of the eComp Manager desktop functionality. Um, so with this, uh, we have the ability to um, make cycle changes or handle job changes uh, after a cycle has been opened or processed. Um, previously, you took a snapshot of your data, essentially when the cycle was calculated, and any job changes were not accommodated. And they needed to be handled manually. Uh, with 9.2, you do have the ability to determine this exception handling if a mid-cycle change occurs. Um, so the changes that are supported currently are salary changes, uh, currency changes, and HR status, so active or inactive. Uh, you have the ability to configure alerts as well to notify um, when there is a mid-cycle change for a participant. When you're looking at that cycle, you can see an icon, and it will show that 
um, that person how to change. And then you also have the ability to define how those changes should be handled. So should the person be excluded if they had one of those changes and are in an exception status? Do you want them included? Do you want to use um, you know, the data as of when the cycle started or the new data, et cetera? Um, so with this, this really allows cycles to be extended um, because you don't have that limitation of, um, of only capturing the data as of the cycle begin date. Okay, uh, next we have the pivot grids that are delivered from compensation. Uh, so with this, um, there are many, as you can see. Um, this is one of the areas that um, have, I would say, the most uh, delivered pivot grids. So the first one is a salary analysis, I'm looking at a comparison of the compensation by position, location, and department. Uh, the compensation distribution, so looking at the salary range um, relative to the min mid, uh, excuse me, min, max, and midpoint. Uh, we also have a salary increase by performance, so really comparing the performance rating and the um, salary increase in the percentage, and that can be helped or used to help analyze uh, the risk of a person leaving, as well as um, how their increases compare to um, their performance throughout the year. Uh, you also have a variable comp by performance. Uh, so with this, um, it's the total proposed amount. Um, so this is cash type variable compensation that is um, distributed to employees, and that is also by performance rating. Um, so again, you can use it to really better allocate um, the compensation to employees and ensure that it is consistent with their performance rating. Uh, and then we have two related to cycles, so the cycle guideline alert, um, as well as cycle tracking. Uh, there are also two changes related to compensation um, self-service. Uh, these are a new streamlined ad hoc salary change process. Um, so this may be a little hard to see here. Um, but in the salary page, you do also have a chart, and it shows where the person falls within their salary range, um, which is a great graphic, especially when you're trying to do um, the ad hoc salary change, and it's all from that single um, component. Uh, additionally, the compensation history statement has been reformatted. So um, down here on the left, you can get a feel for um, what it looks like now, more of a compensation statement format. Um, with all the changes distributed. And then you also have another um, graphic here where you can view um, the history in a chart form. All right, um, next we'll move into ePerformance. Uh, so to begin, um, as I mentioned, ePerformance is one of the areas where there is a um, work center that has been delivered. Um, this really is going to leverage both the um, the concept of the work center and the activity guide to enable an employee to um, or a manager to complete a transaction for their employees. So here on the left um, in the work center, we have the steps that are needed to complete um, as well as tasks. You can see for this employee, we're looking at a performance document. And then here from the center, we have the actual evaluation. Um, so we're currently in within the process. Um, we've already defined criteria. And you can see from this little icon on the side that we've stopped at the nominate participant. Um, so if we're to leave and come back, this is where we pick off, pick up again is with the nominate. Um, there have been some other changes to the overall look and feel, the um, general user interface of the um, application. Um, one of the other big enhancements with respect to ePerformance is the ability to conduct mid-cycle reviews. Um, so previously, if you had a year-long cycle, um, you, you didn't have checkpoints. Um, with this new functionality, you have the ability to have 11 checkpoints throughout the year. Um, this is an example here of a checkpoint. And 
Um, the checkpoints are used to provide uh, comments and feedback. Um, so there's no rating associated with them at this time. Um, but it helps the manager to be able to track, as well as an employee, to be able to track their progress throughout the year so they can remember the things that happened 12 months ago and they're not trying to remember back and look through old emails and documents. Um, it can all be documented in the system. You can also um, integrate this directly with Outlook. So you can um, send emails and load them into the system as well as attachments and notes. So, um, and you can have both employee and manager comments. So it's really a great way to um, make that year-end or that annual performance review uh, go smoother, as well as um, provide and, and can t keep an open dialogue throughout the year about performance um, and performance goals. Uh, additionally, I did mention the integration with Outlook. Um, so with that, we have the ability to um, take the feedback, like I mentioned, from Outlook and incorporate those into um, performance documents. Um, you can also generate task reminders in Outlook that correspond to your uh, performance cycle. Um, additionally, um, there is tighter integration with career and succession planning. Um, so for those of you that leverage and use both career and succession planning, you can um, tie your results directly um, or link to the data directly within your performance review. And um, again, it allows you to easily access it, view the data, and um, report back within your evaluation. Use that um, to assess um, the work that the person has done. And then lastly, there's also a tighter integration with profile management. Um, so you can um, analyze your, your group of employees, um, not only on the goal attainment, but also on the competencies, the skills, and the um, attributes that are required for their role. All right. Um, next, we will move into benefits. Um, so with benefits, um, the main feature here is regarding the life event processing. Uh, Oracle has delivered a new guided process for life events. It is configurable and very flexible um, and really uh, makes it easier to complete a comprehensive, a full um, event. Uh, so with that, we have um, also a configurable welcome page. So here at the screen print, you can see this is the start of a marriage event um, for Rosanna Channing here. Um, you can have a welcome page. You can configure that text to really make it meet your needs. Um, and then you have the steps um, that are also configurable. Um, and these cross modules. So you can see here we have marital status updates. You can upload documents. Um, you also have the ability to view your um, data um, in a um, in a summary. So um, as the person um, completes their update before they finally submit, they can view a preliminary summary page and see um, the updates that are available. Uh, we also have rules and that can be configured um, for new events. So the life events that are delivered are the standard um, a marriage, divorce, birth of a child, or adoption of a child. If you have other life events that your organization recognizes and wants employees to be able to submit for, you can use the clone tool and create your own life event. Uh, with respect to the benefit analytics, we do have a um, health benefit uh, enrollment statistics uh, analytic that is provided. So here you can see um, an example of the analytic here um, in a pie chart. And you can also um, see the data in the grid view, um, which is when you drill, really drill down into it, you can see the employees that it accounts um, for each plan.
Uh, next, we'll look at absence management. Um, the main enhancement with respect to absence management is Outlook integration. Um, so enabling um, employees to submit their uh, to submit their uh, absence requests directly from Outlook. Um, so you can um, manage requests, you can manage approvals, um, all within Outlook, and it will tie back to the application without having to log into the PeopleSoft system itself. Um, so that's a great way and, and really makes it a lot easier to manage absences as well as approvals um, without having to go back and forth into the system. Uh, next we'll look at time and labor. Uh, so again, within time and labor, we really have this intuitive usability. We have um, a strengthened self-service experience as well as um, comprehensive capabilities with um, real-time rules and validations. Uh, so we have a work center that has been delivered for time and labor. There are also new page works that have been delivered. Um, we have a um, tab application, um, some pivot grids as well as um, BI reports and HR notification. Uh, so here is um, an example of the pivot grid. Um, so you can see, it's a little hard to see here in the center, but um, in this example we have attendance violations. So people who took a late in punch, um, if they took too long of a break or a long meal. And in the center of the page you can view that data um, at the employee level, drill down and see um, who fell into each of those categories. Uh, you also have the DI publisher, um, so you, that enables you to print a timesheet um, from within the employee or the manager timesheet page. Um, also have a audit um, of your time and um, the leave and compensatory time report um, to view um, the balances and um, leave data. And then we also have HR notification, so you can create those recurring announcements that I mentioned earlier so that you can remind people that they need to submit time um, or that they need to um, complete their timesheet. Um, also within Time and Labor, you have the ability to um, lock down um, your timesheet so that if you have a specific time that's being processed, um, let's say payroll is processing and, and employees need to be um, frozen, they can't transact or you don't want them to transact during that processing, you can actually lock out the users by um, the pay group to prevent them from updating the system at that time. And then lastly, with time and labor, you also have the ability to apply rules directly from the timesheet. So this is a configurable option. It doesn't have to be used. 